today with a little quiz. <laughs> Not actually a quiz, but something that I'm inviting you to research out. Tomorrow, December the 7th, marks the 50th anniversary of the promulgation of Gaudium et Spes. That's the pastoral constitution of the church in the modern world. And that document is one that lives in the heart of the Vatican II Council. 50 years. I think it would be fascinating to go back and in looking through that, see what's changed in those 50 years. What's new? What hasn't changed? What still needs to be looked at? What are we considering? How has our life been impacted by the Second Vatican Council? And so, in that Second Vatican Council, with that document, there, that was a moment in time, 50 years ago. Not only a moment in time, there was a great cast of characters. And not only that, but it has taken, rightfully so, a place in history. That's part of the foundation upon which we build our lives of faith. When we go back to those experiences, and we see how it's influenced us, and, and what changes we've made, and possibly as we look at our lives today, what changes still need to be made, and are we aware of that and ready to certainly embrace it? When we consider the messages today in Scripture, Baruch, St. Paul, and John the Baptist, we have that same application of it being a moment in time, cast of characters, and a place in history. And it's our place in history because of our faith. And so we take what we have learned from history and we apply it as we move forward on our journey together. Now, there's a challenge that's been issued, and it's all about a way of life. How do we live our lives? The call to see the salvation of God, as it was for the prophets, is the same for us today. John the Baptist tells us that our response is to make straight, make whole our relationship with God and with others. That's a call and response. God calls us through scripture and invites us to give a response. And so we begin to understand more about the nature of ongoing conversion. Ongoing conversion, to begin the good work that was begun in you and will be carried out until the day of Christ's coming, until the day when we meet the Lord face to face. So our responses then can't just be word of mouth. They can't just be verbal. They have to be expressed in our way of life. If you're going to talk the talk, then you have to walk the walk. And so it's easy to do one and slide on the other. So what's really important is the consideration, am I being authentic? Am I being authentic in what I say and how I say I live my faith and how I actually live it out? how I treat others. So if we're going to take that step forward, then there are some indications that we have to consider. One of those is we have to cross the valley of isolation. The valley of isolation by offering and accepting the dignity of others. How often when someone is different from us, doesn't think the same way we do, we, we isolate them, we make them invisible, and we don't have any interaction with them. How often does that happen? If that does happen, then we have to stop and we have to rethink why that happens. What is there in me that's making it happen? It's not about them. It's what's going on in me that's approaching it in that way. How do we straighten out what we might call the paths of indifference by recommitting ourselves to living out the gospel values? How do we recommit ourselves? And really, that should be almost a daily event. Because we wake up in the morning and we say, I am your follower, Lord. I am your disciple. Then I have to recommit myself to the activity that proves that to someone else. It says, ah, yes, I can see that the Lord is center in your life. The Lord is important in your life. And... 
that means we're going to have a relationship on a very different level. Now, you might have been watching up in the sanctuary area the faces that are up there. Let me tell you just a little bit about them. Yesterday, we did first reconciliation for the children in preparation for their first communion. And we have some of them here with us today. And so their teachers thought it would be a good idea to help them know more about God's love for them and our love for them and the love that we share with one another by drawing a face that would speak of their happiness, their joy, or how they were feeling after they completed their sacrament of reconciliation. Aren't they great? <laughs> and of course, it was a good property because you can see a little mock up there. You know, we have the eyes and we have the smile, so we're giving them a little lead in. You know, you can put in the hair and the color, but we, everybody should be coming out of that sacrament having had a good experience. And I'll tell you, it is an experience. <laughs> there was one child who, when you discuss behavior, you know, those little children aren't really aware of sin, but behavior they know. And so you're saying, now, if you have bad behavior over here, and you're running into obstacles like you get a, a punishment for that, then you want to take and leave that bad behavior and come over here to do good behavior, right? Yes, okay, so I said to this one child, do you think you can do that? <sighs> I said, Father, life is hard. <laughs> my very best poker face. <laughs> uh, but across the screen was, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> so I said, yes, you're right. Life is hard. And that, that means it takes a lot of energy to always know the right things that you're supposed to be doing and to watch the people that give you the example. So when you come to church, then you're going you're gonna to know more about what it is to do the right thing and, and not do the wrong thing. So it was a it was a tremendous experience. <laughs> Coming off of that, out of the readings we heard today, that we are remembered by God. We are not only remembered by God, but God remembers everything. So in that remembrance that God has of us, what what do we want to be remembered for? What do what do we want people to look at us and remember us for? Because that's, that's our gift, that's our legacy in the relationships that we share. So if we want to be remembered for people who are willing to, to look at struggle and challenge and to embrace it and to move forward, if we want to look at people who want their core values of mercy and compassion and forgiveness to be always on the surface where they can be shared, moment's notice, you can share the mercy, and share the forgiveness, whatever it needs to be. So we are remembered by God and will be until the day of Christ's coming when we stand before him. Our hope is in God's promise. And that promise, that it's God's hope for us, must never be squelched by cynicism. And the reality is we live in a pretty cynical world today. We live in a tremendously violent world today. We live in a world that is crying out for, I think, the presence of God and the abundance of grace to help everyone turn their life around and to have a life that is so grounded and centered in God. And yet, what we find ourselves, I think, caught up in is a world that is devalued of human life. We devalue human life. We don't we don't respect human life. We don't dignify human life. And people in our life of faith and Christians will all stand up and say, we are totally against abortion. But in the next breath, many of them are willing to say, but I believe in capital punishment. I don't know how you use those two things in the same sentence. If we are called to respect life from the moment of conception, to natural death, then that's all inclusive. And so we really can't pick out what we don't want and what we do want and, and have that be valid 
if we're going to follow the path of discipleship? I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think that's a challenge for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So the stark reality is that we have to remain faithful to that God who never abandons us. And it's no different from the reality that Baruch, <coughs> St. Paul, John the Baptist found in their own life experience. Paul tells us, and I want to leave you with this because I think it's, it's an important message. We must discern what is of value so that we may be pure and blameless in the day of Christ. <coughs> See, we're, we're planning in two weeks to celebrate Christmas, the Incarnation, but what we're really planning for is the Second Coming. And we, we don't know when that Second Coming is going to happen. You're not going to get an invitation in the mail for the Second Coming. You're not going to do an RSVP that you're ready for the Second Coming. It's going to happen. And so, fair warning, I think, that Jesus tells us is be ready. Be ready. And that's what Paul tells us today. And so that takes some introspection into our lives. And it takes asking those tough questions about who am I? Who am I in my relationship with God? Who am I in my relationship with my sisters and brothers? And then take that understanding and put that into action. So that that little girl said, life is hard. And indeed it is. And the community said, amen. amen.